afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fanning the Flame. I cannot encourage you enough today to be true to one of a kind you. In Elohim, there is truly one mold for each of us, and only I can deposit into this world as I partner with God. He's my leader. I'm the follower. Can di distribute and deposit, contribute to this world. Only me, one of a kind me, one of a kind you. And if I don't do it, and I have the Holy Spirit living in me, I'm going to be convicted. I'm just going to know something isn't right. And I've been talking about how it's so critical that we become keener and more astute in this world as wickedness increases. You know, we can experience peer pressure at any age. It doesn't matter. And there can be so much pressure around us that it can become difficult to hear and to discern. You know, I always say little checks become big checks. I remember years ago, just as an example, I was in a position where sometimes I could rent out different rooms where I was living in Israel before I, I've been living here the last nearly four years. And I remember, you know, I would always pray, and I'm sure the person coming as a believer would pray, hey, Lord, is this the right place? Show me if it is when I go and meet the, you know, the person and, and see the place. And so this young woman came to the door, and there was such a slight, eh, just a very, very slight, almost, almost like not even there. But there it was, very slight. And I did notice it. And it's interesting because normally, you know, I'm called to be like a mother of nations. I'm a mother in law a sister, you know, and I love ministering to women. And so, you know, whomever would come, you know, and I would meet, we'd have a nice chat. I'd usually offer to pray for them and give them a hug goodbye, you know. But in this particular situation, I did not feel that. It was probably the only girl I did not hug of people that I met that came. Something just was off. And because there was a little check, I heeded to it and I did not select her. And there are other times I'm sure in my life that I did ignore it. I'm sure. And little checks become big checks. They don't go away. They, be they become more prominent. And I, it makes me think of, they say, like, when you're falling in love with someone, you know, the things that you loved become such annoyances sometimes, you know, after you marry. And so it may be. And I honestly think, you know, when people get married young, I mean, you don't know how to be married, so to speak, until you get married and you are learning on the way. It's a learning curve. Um, but I think that, of course, there's so much that God does not show us or else nobody would get married because it's challenging. However, I've also heard that um, as you advance in life, because we're, we've been established in the Lord, uh, once you have someone, I think, that's really suited for you, I'm sure it's a very different story. And so, um, yes, we believe the Lord for his best, absolutely. I spoke the other day, um, unless someone is going to enrich your life and it's going to be double the blessing and double the anointing, don't do it. Uh, because whether we're a man or a woman, if we're in haste about getting married, we're going to make a wrong choice and we're in haste unless we have heard the Lord speak. Sometimes when we want something so badly, we ignore things and we can all do that regarding anything and that is not what God wants for us. God wants us to learn from our experiences. Dafka, bullseye, it's one of my favorite words in Hebrew and I find that I use it a lot when I'm talking about spiritual things. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me some years ago uh, that I am in the spirit an archer. So I, and what's really interesting is that as a child in the natural, I was a bullseye shooter in archery. And what I find comical about that is that I'm nearsighted. And so without contact lenses, um, 
you know, but I'm believing the Lord to heal my eyes. Absolutely. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Father. So let's run after God today, everybody. Let's run after God. And I made, uh, used an example the other day, and it came back to me in more clarity how my friend explained this to me, uh, a male friend some years ago. When you're running your race, if someone can catch up with you, the opposite sex, and they want to know who you are and they introduce themselves, tell them if they can keep up with you. The message in this is don't slow your race down with God and Yeshua's name for another person. Don't do it. Don't compromise your astuteness in the spirit. Don't compromise your integrity, integrity, your purity, your keenness in the spirit. Don't compromise your faithfulness to God for any relationship. Don't do it. This is what I mean when I talk about the pressure. You know, if everyone's swimming one way and God is saying, no, that's not the right way, swim this way. Who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to God. The majority screamed, crucify him, crucify him, the son of man. Were they right? No. God absolutely used it for his ultimate glory. But the majority is not right. Oh, no. Especially when it comes to evil. Oh, no. Particularly when it comes to evil. So I also use this other example. Uh, this person in the Lord was um, convinced that there was something that I was supposed to do. And I have absolutely zero witness. Zero, zero, zero. And so as graciously as I could, I tried to explain to them, no, this is not what God is saying. I'm quite clear. And, you know, you're gracious as much as you can be. And then another situation comes. And then again, pushing pushing, pushing the agenda. Nope, that's not what God is speaking to me. And finally, when you say, hey, you know, if the person gets offended, that is on them. And I referred to the book of the bait of Satan the other day. Excellent book. It's all about how the devil wants us to take up offenses every which way. And if we take up an offense, we are cutting off our own blessing. This book is very eye-opening and very important and lines up with scripture. It's a great book to have next to your Bible. So, so good. Let's forgive quickly best we can. He helps us. God helps us. But forgiveness, I often have found myself saying this, forgiveness is not the same as re-entering a relationship. Forgiveness is forgiveness. That's a separate thing. Whether you choose to re-enter a relationship or not should be led of the Lord, whatever God is saying to you. But it doesn't equal the same thing. Forgiveness doesn't mean re-entering a relationship, only if that is what God is saying. Forgiveness needs to happen, and we can only forgive the, the greatest hurts and devastations with God. I don't know how anybody does it without God, because I believe true healing begins when we meet Yeshua, and then the healing path really, truly begins. So I just want to bless you today. I believe we give God the greatest glory when we live out the fullness of our divine supernatural destinies, one-of-a-kind mold that we were created for. Remember, I can't bring into this world what you can and vice versa. God needs us here. And there's a scripture, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And God gave me a deep understanding, deeper last year about this. So when I'm literally dancing and releasing his glory through the dance, through my actions in my body, God spoke that scripture to me, whatever you loose on earth physically, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven hallelujah you know god we can read something for years but when god is ready and we're listening god can give us a greater revelation and we all know that who are following after the lord and here's my air chauffeur from shofar from jerusalem god bless you in yeshua's